Ada for canceling on a family trip with my in-laws and deciding to cut ties with Estelle? I've been married for a year and a half, Estelle for four years. She met B.I.L. when she was 19 and in 26, he proposed a year later. M.L. was very much against the marriage B.C.S. of how young Estelle was and how much older her son was. Estelle took it personally. While my husband being two years older than me, making us 26 and 28 right now. M.L. had no issue with our marriage and because of that Estelle felt like I was more preferred than her. Estelle didn't finish her studies, stopped at high school and never worked. While I got my degree and am working. She thinks I am also the favorite because I finished my studies and have a career and she doesn't. I don't believe either of us is being favored over the other. As Estelle been married for four years now and Mile got over her age and been treating us equally, in my opinion. But even if that wasn't the case and ML is playing favorites, that is not my fault. Why'd I have to pay for it? SL is always throwing words at me whenever she gets the chance. She says the opposite of what I say and tries to prove me wrong all the time. While I never claim to know better, but sometimes it's a topic that I researched and I'm passionate about. Has nothing to do with my studies. And she would tell me how wrong I am and how she looked it up on Facebook. Even the most random things. Like when she mentioned a famous artist and called them gay. I said that artist is not gay. She told me to check the way they dress and act, and I told her just because someone dresses a certain way doesn't make them gay, unless they come out and say it themselves, and that said artist never came out. She would argue that there was an article online about them being gay, and there are photos even. I know for a fact there's no such thing, so I just drop it and tell her maybe she's right. One time, I made a spelling error, and as soon as I left the room, I heard her tell Emile about it. Estelle got a 2.5 years old son while I'm struggling with infertility. Estelle makes every topic about her pregnancy, hospital stay, birth, son, etc. If I say I'm tired, she'd tell me, you don't know what's being really tired means until you have kids, with my son I am blah blah blah. If I say I have no appetite, she'd make it about when she was pregnant and had no appetite. If I say my back hurts, she'd make it about how bad her back was when she was pregnant. It never ends. If it's not the pregnancy, then something else where she's the center of attention. At first, I was engaging in such conversations, but now I don't even listen. The second reason is her son. As I mentioned before, he is two and a half years old, and he is absolutely insufferable. When we have family gatherings, be it birthdays or barbecue or whatever, I help in the kitchen. I love baking and cooking, so I like to help. I love decorating the plates, making cute bites, decorating the tables, etc. Nephew is allowed to everything. Everything. If he wants to pick all the tomatoes I just cut for the salad and eat them, then I should let him do so, and go and cut new ones. If he wants the eggs I just boiled, then he can have them, and I will boil new ones. Dot. If he wants a piece of the cake I made for later, then I should cut the cake just for him and ruin the whole design before anyone could see it or enjoy it just for him to have a small bite and decide he doesn't want it anymore and throw it on the floor. All of that before we sit for lunch. He'd be full from all the snacking, but if he still wants something, even if everyone knows that he's full and is probably going to give it a lick then step on it, you have to give it to him because he is just a child. If he wants all the cheese from your plate then yep, give up your cheese, you can go, and buy some if you want it while he's a baby, he doesn't understand. If he says, I want pudding, it doesn't matter if he just ate the whole fridge, you're gonna have to go make him pudding because he is a baby and you can't let him crave something and not have it. He sits wherever he wants on the table. Doesn't matter if you've put work and effort in arranging the seats. And if he decides he wants your seat, then you have to get up and let him sit or he won't stop crying. Last time we met, he picked up an empty five liters water bottle and proceeded to hit me with it for five minutes or so while SL and ML kept watching. I told him to stop multiple times and when he refused, I took the bottle from his hand and he started screaming murder. Then ML told me to give it back and he's just a child and doesn't know what he's doing. When he's upset, he throws things around grabs the phone and throw it, strawberries, plates, spills water, and juice purposely. Always the same excuse, he is just a child, for him it's playing. I am so fucking done with him. He understands money and to ask for it, but not hitting people is bad. Throwing things is bad. I never yell at him because I know Emile wouldn't like that and SL would take the opportunity to paint me as the villain. He is the family's first grandchild and SL often tells me that. I try not to say anything, to just get it over with. Give him what he wants and leave because I won't be seeing him until the next gathering which usually happens every month. But this time I am just don't. I don't want to put up with it anymore. I don't want to see Estelle or her son again. I've had enough. We had a trip planned with the whole family. Our first trip together and I canceled yesterday. 
I called Imael and told her I won't be coming. I told my husband he's free to go if he wants, but I won't. I also told him I will be cutting Estelle off. I will stop going to the family gatherings. I would visit when she's not around. My husband says he understands why I'm upset, but I should be understanding of my Estelle's feelings and be the bigger person. I don't want to be the fucking bigger person. I want out. He says I shouldn't have canceled me going to the trip. That everyone was looking forward to it, and now I've ruined it because they would try to change the date so I can go. And when I keep refusing, they would get that something is wrong, and that would create tension in the family. He says I should just go with it and ignore Estelle's comments, that she doesn't mean them, and she's just insecure. He says I should feel bad for her instead and try to help her. As for his nephew, he thinks it's ridiculous that I'm beefing with a two years old and that he won't stay this was forever. He will grow up and do better. So am I the asshole for having enough and wanting to cut them off? Nta. Your husband needs to grow a spine and have your back. Everyone is just a fucking enabler. Good for you for being firm. I wouldn't want to deal with the circus either. They're just a bunch of clowns. 100% this and the idea that a spoiled child with no boundaries will somehow magically change as they get older is ludicrous. I'm sorry for the kids' future teachers when they explain these things called rules. Yeah, I picked up on that too. That kid is only going to become a larger problem for more people as time goes on. When are they going to start drawing the line? Life is a continuum. Two and a half year olds are certainly able to learn to not hit people and they don't always get what they want. This as he gets older it's going to be worse and he's going to be more entitled and he will know what to do to make things his way. This is true. Estelle lets him act like this because she thinks she's managed to give Emile her only grandkid so far, one-upping Opie, and because he's the only grandson, he gets to be treated like a spoilt little prince. The more he gets away with, the more it reinforces, in Estelle's mind, that she is the mother of the only grandchild in the family and it makes her feel special. This is important to her because she feels so insecure when it comes to Opie. Opie is right to cut her out now. God help any child Opie might have. They will be bullied and constantly compared to Esile's child. Any attention from Emile towards Opie's child will be deemed favoritism. On top of that, he will never earn a most popular kid in class award either. Nobody is going to want to play with him and parents won't want to invite him over. Estelle is not worth the time of day. When she interrupts, I would respond with bless your heart and then turn back to whomever you were talking to. And I would absolutely not tolerate bad behavior. It is not the child's fault because he does not know any better at this age. It is his parents and other IL's fault. The first time he hits me with anything would be the last. I would have grabbed the bottle and when Estelle complained, I would have smacked her with it and asked her, how does that feel? He tries to take my chair. I would pick him up and hand him to his mother. He wants something off of my plate. That is a big nope. When they complain, my response is this is something called setting boundaries and teaching manners. Try it sometime. Failure to do so will turn him into a social pariah once he starts school. You all will be Pikachu-faced when you discover that nobody wants to play with him and he doesn't get invited to birthday parties. As adults, you are totally failing him and you will be responsible for how he turns out. If Opie takes and maintains a firm stance with the little brat, he will learn pretty quickly not to mess with her. You can be very calm about it yet clear in establishing your boundaries. Being young is no excuse for allowing a child to act like a wild beast. That is actually pretty embarrassing for the family. Exactly that kid wouldn't get my food sorry not sorry. My kids don't act like that and I'm not dealing with anyone else's around me like that. That kid's going to be a terror. You also have a husband problem if he's not defending you and expecting you to continually turn the other cheek to other people's bad behavior. Your husband needs to take off the blinders. Estelle is a self-centered poor excuse for a mother and ML is not any better. Estelle's conversation are all about her and how her events outshine any others. She seems to forget that she is not the first woman to give birth. As to her obnoxious brat, if he was hitting SIL or ML they would not tolerate it. You're only the DL so it does not matter if he attacks you slash S. Tell hubby that you refuse to set yourself on fire to keep them warm. He can either join them on the vacation solo or stay home with you. The ILs do not have the right to subject you to the abuse of SIL and her brat. NTA. I would ask husband why he feels it's okay that his wife is miserable. He's worrying about Estelle's feelings but not his own wife's. Grow a spine, dude. And Ta and Op isn't beefing with a two-year-old. She's beefing with MIL, SIL, and Proly BIL cause he's just a baby. Please show your husband all these comments. Maybe it will be an awakening for him. He desperately needs an awakening. NTA, you have a husband problem? Just put up with the constant, never-ending BS because she's insecure. 
This. I friggin' loathe when people pull the just be the bigger person, just ignore it, or it's just the way they are nonsense. No, they way they are is a fucking asshole and their behavior is unacceptable. People do not have to put up with shitty behavior just to keep some semblance of peace. Opie's husband sucks for expecting her to just deal with it because that's what will be easiest on him. Her Estelle sucks for being an insecure garbage human. ML sucks for the same reasons as her husband. And yes, while not his fault because he's not being taught better, the two-year-old and his current behavior suck too. Opie is NTA. The emotions she's having are normal and rational, and her husband is basically gaslighting the hell out of her. She indeed has a husband problem. NTA. As for his nephew, he thinks it's ridiculous that I'm beefing with a two years old and that he won't stay this was forever. He will grow up and do better. He won't. Education starts at birth. How does he expect him to miraculously get better once he ages if nobody tells him N.O.? And your Estelle can be insecure, but that is not on you. You should not always have step on yourself so others don't feel insecure. Kids are kids, but they will remain kids even at 80 years old without boundaries and proper guidance. Take care of your mental health and do what's best for you. Your husband needs to learn to deal with his family. He thinks that once the kid gets older and start to understanding, they would start teaching him right and wrong. Because that's what they've been saying. If I attempt to correct him at something, his parents would say he doesn't get it yet. When he's a bit older, we'll teach him. Which I know is ridiculous. I know that mentality. Unfortunately, there's no point in trying to explain anything or get involved in that discussion. It's their kid, their responsibility. He's not going to magically understand at some point and will be an absolute nightmare to deal with in later years. He will believe that he can do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, and that everybody needs to cater to his needs, kind of like your SL. But again, not your monkey. Stand firm on your boundaries. I think your husband needs to understand that nobody is supposed to just put up with bad behavior just because they are dealing with family. He's just a child and doesn't know better. Last time someone used that line on me, I told them yes but you are not. You are a grandmother, and you definitely know better. It is up to you to teach your child, and if you can't, let me do it for you. That was a neighbor, and the child has not been a nuisance since that interaction several weeks ago. That's such a good comeback. I wish I told them that last time we met, but I was too focused on not losing my temper and getting out of there. It is the parent's fault. You've also got a good comeback to next time your Estelle starts up with the, you don't know what tiredness means till you're a parent. I'm so tired with my son. O-S-I-L. I hear that. I bet you're tired of him. He's such a nightmare, isn't he? NTA. Your husband is trying to throw you under the bus for his comfort. That way he doesn't have to deal with the fallout and he's not the one being targeted so it's fine with him. Asking you to be the bigger person basically be be a doormat because it makes my life easier. A lot like it was just a prank means I'm an attention-seeking bully. I agree. My husband doesn't want to deal with the aftermath, so he wants me to suck it up and ignore everything while he pretends like we're happy to be in their presence. Maybe he's happy, but I'm not. I definitely will not let him do that. Except that, by your own account, you have been sucking it up. You've tuned out Esnell and told her that she might be right. You've given in to your nephew, so as not to annoy him, I'll. None of which is bad if you don't want to rock the boat, but you have to admit that you've been complicit in the dynamics as your husband has. It seems that you're calling him out for the same behavior in which you've engaged. You could cut them off. That's a valid response. But you could also start standing up to them. No, my cake won't be cut now. Nephew can have a piece at blank o'clock. No, he can't hit me with the bottle. I don't like it. And when excuses are offered up, don't engage. Just repeat yourself. It's more work, but I've found that it's worth it in the end. NTA. Your husband is ridiculous with his be the bigger person. No freaking way. He needs to stop being a pathetic nothing and tell his sister to shut up and tell his mom to stop enabling. I would make this a deal breaker.